What is good guys, in today's video I will be taking you step by step on how to draw this illustrated style girl. Start to finish, just stick around, let's waste no more time and just jump straight into the tutorial. Let's go. Okay, so basically guys, I recorded this whole video, <coughs> but my mic wasn't uh, plugged in properly, so it didn't actually record the audio. So I'm doing it separately, so it's not going to be live, but I can talk you through what's going on anyway. Okay, the first thing we'll be doing is we're starting off with a circle. And once we have that in place, we're now going to draw the centre line and the middle line to divide the head into four quarters. Obviously, you hit this character here is facing to the left, so the centre line bends towards that way to give it more shape. Once that's all in place, the next thing I like to concentrate and put in place first always is the eyes, because as humans, that's the first thing we're actually drawn to as we're looking at a picture. This is done with oil painting, acrylic, as well as in um, illustrative art and graffiti art. So once I've got the two eyes in place with these little half triangle shapes, I'm then going to slowly build the makeup on and make sure I put the eyelids. To put the eyelids in place correctly, I'm just going to pull a line back from the eye and then do another line going to the right side to the left until it gives it this sort of look I'm doing now. Once the eyes are the foundation of the eyes are in place. I add a little line on the side of each one just to give it a little curve of where the eyelid would sit. Now the eyes are there, next thing I'm going to move on to is the nose. The nose will sit in the fourth, in the third quadrant, sorry, <coughs> and I start off with this little rectangle shape just to put the um, nose in place how I like it. Once I have that rectangle down as a foundation, I'm then going to put the right nostril in place first, as that's the closest closest side to the audience, and then slowly put the left side in next. The good thing about the nose is that when you're drawing it, you can put the foundation in first and then build around it. So here obviously I've just rubbed out a bit of the right nostril and then replacing it just to get it better, a better fit on it. Um, once I've got the eyes and nose, the next feature, I like to get the key features in place first. So that would be the eyes, the nose and the mouth. And then I like to build the face, the shape of the face around that. So nose in place, eyes in place. I'm just gonna jump straight onto the eyebrows by doing a singular line first just so it will guide out where I need to thicken out the eyebrow um, just give it the position which obviously the eyebrows as you probably know give a lot of expression to the face so even if you do the same kind of eyes with this sort of illustrated style if you throw the eyebrows in a different position you can change the guy from happy expression to a sad expression um, with just a quick a quick line I'm just going to now put in a few shades around the nose and then after that's all in place move on to the lips with the lips I like to just drop down about a centimetre from the nose and pit the placement of the top lip in first. Normally when I'm doing the top lip, I shade that a lot darker than the bottom lip itself, but I really concentrate on the bottom lip mainly when I do mouths. If you've seen my album before, you'd know that obviously because the bottom lip is normally a lot plumper and a lot bigger, so then you can, um, it just has a lot more expression in it than the top, which is obviously could be quite thin, but obviously that would depend on the character you're doing it yourself as well. Um, so I just do a little rectangle leaning towards the audience so if you imagine this perspective towards the audience is a lot bigger and it slopes inwards as I go towards the left side of the face. Once I have a look at all that and make sure all the key features are in place and I'm happy, I then start to figure out how I'm going to do the face, what shape I'm going to give it. To do this I start off on the left side of the face so I would just drag a line from the eye and slowly curve it in towards the mouth and sometimes I won't even connect the line to the top lip I will just curve it in and let the fade just act as more of a more of a I suppose like an illusion towards the connective point to the lip and once that's done I then copy that sort of roundness the round shape onto the right side of the face so it both leans in towards the center almost like a triangle all pulling in towards the mouth the main trick I'm trying to do is that lead the eye lead the eye from one side to the other into the focal point point. 
and now from the bottom of the chin I'm just connecting it to the to the overall face shape to the right hand side. Um, to give you a good idea of how you want to really work the perspective on the face I'm just going to draw the square over the face and where that center line is each left and right side is going to angle off into the distance um, that's why the eye on the left hand side of the face is a lot smaller than the one on the right because the right is the one that is closest towards the audience and is really the main focal point of this drawing. Um, the more you can bend that perspective and work with it the more dynamic you can actually make your images look towards the end. There's a few great artists that do that in the community. Um, I don't really bend it crazy with the perspective. I, I normally play it quite safe. I'm in the middle ground. Obviously you don't want your images to be flat but then obviously I'm not don't really feel like my artwork suits the style of bending it crazy so just find out what works for you. Um, with the ears like I said I like to make sure I have like a more of a unique style so I do the ears quite big so I just put two circles on each side of the head almost looking to form as like monkey like ears I suppose it's just a stylistic thing I like to do it makes your artwork stand up because there's so many artists out there who draw females and they all look very much the same, all like Losh V, they all copy that style and it's just the same as the same. So find little niches or little pockets where you can really put in your own twist and your own style. That way you stand out already from everybody else. So with the ears I make them a little bit bigger, a few bits of detail. Um, then I just rework a few little things on the face, like the touch of the eyebrows. And now from the left eyebrow it's time I drag up the rest of the face to the top. So I'm just going to do a line pointing upwards ready for the hair. Now hair can be a love-hate relationship. The very good thing about hair I like is the free-flowing aspect of it. Um, where everything else is quite bold and straightforward, the hair can be flowy and I can really let the pencil do most of the work by letting it go loose. So once I've got the the top of the head where the hair's going to sit, I'm then going to just work out rough shapes of where the hair is going to be. In this hairstyle, you can pick any hairstyle you want, but I'm just going to do like a bob tied up to the back Pulled, uh, pull back so yeah I'm just putting all the hair just make sure the lines flow towards the back of the heads in towards the bubble the bubbly shape which is also going to be the the group of hair and now I'm going to have a few bits of hair sh falling down um, coming onto the face just a few twirly shapes just um, yeah pulling across this gives the image a lot more movement the illusion of movement without having to go over the top with this if you're not very good at doing body posture um, like extreme body positions Use the hair to your advantage to really give it a lot more movement. Make sure it's all going in the same sort of direction and has a flow, flow like, excuse me, aspect to all. Um, and with that, yeah, you can really take your character drawing from like an eight to a ten easy. And like I'm, uh, like I'm doing here. Once the foundation's in, then I add. Just concentrate on the foundation. Don't put so much pressure on yourself to make it perfect first time round, because. That's when a lot of your artwork looks um, too still and too stifled, is when you're trying to perfect it um, straight away. And that's just the same as in life, do you know what I mean? No one's perfect, so don't try and aim for perfection. Just fit basic shapes down and then slowly build and keep building and keep building to get to a point where you look at what you're doing and then you're actually happy with the final outcome to then darken things up completely. Now seeing as we're on the topic of adding expression without actually um, without actually throwing a lot of crazy dynamic body positions, I'm going to tell you the second trick apart from hair and that is to work with the hands. Now if you like a lot of my art or you see a lot of the way I draw, how, thing, how I create things, hands play a big part in my artwork and I always like to try and get them in place before I even start on the body. Only on some drawings, drawings not on all pieces of art, but um, only on a few. So let me just show you now. If I just put in a rough shape now of the hands next to the face, it gives the whole face a different sort of energy, a different, a different sort of storytelling um, feature. Because with the hands, you can they show a lot of expression with the bent fingers. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna put the fingers in place here to just show you guys what what I mean. And like I said before, I always like to put the hands in majority of the time first, and then it gives you a better understanding of how the body's gonna flow. And now I'll just show you with the second hand as well, so I'm just going to put the second hand in place now and um, then I'll show you what, I'm, what I mean.
And you might have those days where you draw and you don't know what to draw. And my best advice for that is um, do the same sort of process I'm doing now. Just start with a circle and put the eyes and nose in, and you'd be surprised how um, things just come to you as you're creating and you start seeing, ah, oh, it looked cool if I balanced out the image by putting a shape here, or um, you could be holding something. So with this image, I can see right now, it'd be cool if I had gave it like a sushi knife or like, um, yeah, like a chef's knife, just because then it's got more context of a story instead of just a woman stood there, and it's a bit more interesting. Um, lets the viewer make up their own mind of who this person is and what they're about. Um, yeah, and that's some, of, that's some of the best advice I could give about just drawing in general, is starting is half the battle. Um, it's cool to have concepts, sometimes I, a concept I'm inspired, I, I hear or see something, I get so inspired and the concept comes naturally, but 80% of the time, it's just starting. As soon as I pick a few face features, then I start feeling like, okay, I want to try this, and I'm going to add this element or put something in the hair. And then before you know it, I've designed something completely different, not even I knew what the end result was going to be, which adds a lot more fun and excitement to the drawing process, instead of just being monotonous, and because basically you can see what you're going to draw in your head, it's just you are the person who's going to bring into reality, but when you don't know what you're going to bring into reality, the whole spawn, what's it like, the whole mysteriousness of it all is actually, um, well for me, quite a fascinating aspect of doing art and the creative process. Because I like the sort of Asian feel this thing has, I'm going to um, give her a Komodo too. So the arms will obviously, the clothing's going to drop from the arms there. And same will go on this side. Like so. And I'm going to have it tied up like very geisha-like. And pull that out. So once you have all the basic foundations in place, then you can start pulling shapes out a little bit extra and make it fit. Well, um, better than did previously. Pull that down. And then obviously around the stomach, have that, where they tie in that big, um, the big bow sort of thing. But I'm really gonna accentuate this, really like drag it out so it's more animated. So like, what all I do is throw in the basic shape of how I think it will be, like roughly like that. And then I will go into it again with more details like I'm doing so now, more bends. Just prepping it basically for when I darken all the shapes out so I have a really uh, solid foundation to build upon. Because if the foundation ain't right, there's no point carrying on um, unless you really know what you're doing. It just, just, this is the best time just to play around with the shapes and um, bring it all together. Like that, bring the bow in. I think for this, we're just gonna concentrate on the top half. Um, I'm not gonna go too much in depth of the bottom and legs and stuff. So I'm literally gonna leave it there, I think. I feel like throwing a few things around here extra. But yeah, um, now once you're happy with the foundation, really take take your pencil and um, just pick up all the things you wanna keep. So I might add a bit look, further down here. Might add a few more lines to the face, maybe like nose, a nose line up there just to give it more shape changes and I'm just looking for just things to really bring it to a to a 9 to a 10 drop the shade down here just an indication and I might actually lose the earring I feel like it's it's just not any suiting so we're gonna lose that and just have the ear in place and keep it really uh, really feminine and I might also just throw some more small loose bits of hair just floating around from the top and paint another chopstick, yeah, or another stick. All right, guys. Once you get to a good place where you want to line it, you want to then sharpen your pencil up. And go over the whole image, just picking up the lines you want to keep um, and adding some shade work. Uh, I'll do a tutorial in the future of explaining the shading process if you like, but um, basically darken the bits you want to keep and lighten the thing just these are things you don't want to have in your image. 
keep going, rendering the image until you get to a nice place and you're happy with the final result. So I'm gonna time lapse it for you now, guys, and uh, I'll talk to you at the end. So when you've got your pencil and you've got so when you've got your pencil and gone over the whole thing and darken the areas you want to keep, you should end up with something like this. Um, further down the line, if I wanted to paint this, because I've got the shading in place, I know where the tone of colours are going. So obviously it'd be like a darker tone here to a lighter tone up here. And then basically it's just more of an easier map for me to read later on. But yeah guys, that's basically the end of the video of how to draw like this illustrated style of a, of a girl or a woman. Um, I hope you enjoy. Any other videos you guys want to see, make sure you leave me a comment in the comment section. I read them all, I go through them. Um, as always, a massive thank you to the family over on Patreon. Without you guys, none of this would be possible. It's really allowed me to put more time in creating more content for you all. Um, so yeah, jump on board, join the team, and once again, have a good day. Um, peace.